So we made it to June of 2020. Usually that wouldn't be much of an accomplishment itself, just making it through winter, through spring and towards summer. But with 2020, the way, the way this year is going, I'm happy to be here. It's June 3rd and we're out at the range and we're continuing uh, the project that we're working on with the pistol caliber carbines and actual uh, pistol variants of guns or firearms that are typically utilized as carbines. Uh, we started out with the little uh, go ballistic, the GB9, uh, 9mm, and we are moving forward into the CMMG Banshee. And today, I've been looking forward to for a while, we're going to look inside of the Banshee and see what makes it so different, how it tames the recoil as much as it does, and how even though it is so similar looking to some of these other designs, the operating system itself is actually very different. When I was a young fella, new to the AR platform, uh, back in the 1980s, there weren't many variations that were, that were available. The SP-1 was the most common one, and if you wanted a pistol caliber, it was going to have to be the 9mm carbine. And I used to think it was funny. I heard friends discussing it, and they would talk about how the recoil was so excessive in the 9mm, how choppy the recoil was, and, and how, how rough it could be. On, on the receiver itself and I could never understand that because the I was thinking of it you know outwardly the nine millimeter cartridge is so much smaller and less powerful uh, than, than the rifle cartridge the 556 uh, there's so much less pressure uh, it, it just didn't make any sense to me that the pistol round would would be providing an excessive choppy uh, recoil where the rifle round was very very tameable of course, it didn't take long before I understood that with the rifle rounds, the bolt has a locking mechanism. The bolt actually moves forward into the barrel extension and locks into place and has to be unlocked before it can start its rearward travel. With the pistol variants at the time, it was just a, a flat-faced bolt pushing up against a chamber and the microsecond that you would fire while well, you're starting the recoil stroke immediately there was no unlocking and and all of that weight was coming back you know right away because of that it necessitated a much heavier bolt carrier i i think it's like six ounces heavier than normal uh, and it also necessitated a heavier buffer so not only do you have the carrier starting its rearward travel you know the moment that you fire it unlocked as there's nothing to lock uh, but now you've got more mass you've got a heavier carrier and you also have a heavier buffer and and that translates into all of these extra recoil impulses that have felt with the nine millimeter uh, fast forward here to 2020 and with most of the guns on the market that's still the same it's almost the same mechanism they've been refined a lot uh, since the original Colt uh, as you've seen the receivers today you know use friendly magazines and, and they're actually meant for it. They're not things that have inserts that have to be drilled and pinned or even wedged or compliance fit in. Uh, there are some definite advancements and benefits to the newer ones, but most of them still have that same system where the second you squeeze it, it starts the carrier returning to the rear and, and you've got the heavier parts, hence all that chatter and extra recoil that people talk about. At least that's been the case up until now. The CMMG MKG bolt carrier group such as I have in this Banshee utilizes a proprietary system they designed and developed called a radial delayed blowback and it's much more similar to the original 556 or rifle round bolt type of system where it actually has a, a locking mechanism that closes into the barrel extension. Let's have a peek at the internals and uh, we'll compare it to the standard blowback like we have in the Go Ballistic. First, let's open up the CMMG. And let's take a peek at the traditional blowback design, such as in the Go Ballistic.
And while it looks similar to the regular direct gas impingement system, there are several differences. You'll notice right away that there is no gas key uh, on the bulk carrier. There is no gas tube uh, coming from the barrel diverting gas up into the bulk carrier like a standard DGI system. It's still a blowback system. For the bolt itself, the rear of the lugs that made into the barrel extension have a chamfer on it. And when the gun is fired, that rearward pressure builds. It, it starts to pill traveling down the barrel and that chamfer on the rear of the bolt starts to turn inside the barrel extension to unlock the bolt. So there's a short moment there where with the traditional pistol caliber guns, we have that immediate you know, return of the bolt carrier. With this one, we have that delay due to the chamfers that are cut on the lugs. The bolt, the bolt will turn inside the extension and then start its travel to the rear. So looking quickly at the CMMG uh, bolt carrier and bolt, um, what differentiates it from a traditional direct gas impingement, there are a couple things that are outwardly quickly uh, visibly different. The first, if you're looking from the top, might be this cutout that is in what would traditionally be the gas key. And that cutout is to make room for the custom um, bolt retaining pin uh, that's necessary for this system. You'll notice that the bolt's also spring-loaded, so it moves to the front. We're in a traditional direct gas impingement system. It, it's not at all. I have no idea if the, if the decreased felt recoil is visible. I, I don't know. I know that I can feel it. I know that I can see it. I know that it's noticeable uh, downrange on my target, so I know that it's there. But what I want to do now is I want to fire a magazine uh, at a uh, medium rapid pace through the GB9. I want to try to match that pace with the same ammunition through the Banshee. And I want to see if we can run those clips together to see if there is any noticeable difference in recoil impulse that we can actually see. First, we're going to shoot the Go Ballistic GB9. Uh, and for ammo, we're just using an assortment of 124 grain full metal jacket stuff. Let's try to replicate that, or as close as I can, with the CMMG Banshee. I'm not sure whether that's going to actually be visible or not, the different recoil impulse. Um, but boy, you can feel it. It's much, much softer. Uh, it's much easier to keep the Sightmark Wolverine on my little silhouette downrange. Um, and it's nowhere near as, as choppy. I think choppy is probably uh, a decent adjective for the type of recoil felt on the 9mm. It just dawned on me that while I have an American manufacturing triple X K-Jet suppressor um, to utilize on the Banshee, it won't fit underneath the... Uh, small rail that's on the GB9 so I'm not going to be able to utilize it on both but I want to test that theory and see if there's anything again visible we can see different on the ejection port than maybe we're used to when we fire the uh, the standard 9 millimeter blowback not the delayed radio blowback like the Banshee uses and we're going to be running some 147 grain lawman ammo um, through the suppressor obviously we don't need any hearing protection with this setup <laughs> you can certainly hear that steel getting pounded down range. So I hope that we all know just a little bit more about the uh, MKG radio delayed blowback system than we did um, you know, earlier. And I still have a lot of questions. I still have a lot of things that I want to know, such as does that extra energy momentarily going down the bore affect the muzzle velocity at all? I'm going to guess that it does. 
but again, I, I don't know that. So what we're going to do is bring the Caldwell Ballistic Chronograph out next time I come to the range, and we're going to do some muzzle velocity testing, um, both in the Banshee and GB9, and then we'll compare them. I want to run subsonic ammo, I want to run supersonic ammo, and I'd like to run some rounds through the suppressor as well, because people ask about that on occasion. And then maybe we could do something really goofy, like try to push these things out to distance a little bit. We'll get off the pistol and submachine gun range, and we'll move over to the rifle range a little bit, and uh, we'll see what it looks and sounds like at 100 yards or 200 yards or 300 yards. Who knows? If we're going to be foolish, maybe 400 yards. Who knows? So thanks for sticking around. Thanks for making it through 2020 with me. If you enjoyed this further look at the CMMG Banshee, please click like, share us with your friends in your vast social media universe. Subscribe to the channel if you don't already, both on YouTube and on Full30. You can visit us over at Patreon, where you typically get a little earlier look at our videos uh, before they go live for everybody. And if you just like to talk guns, probably Facebook is the best place to do that at facebook.com slash guntestvids. Till next time, have fun and be safe. Thank you.